and look who it is. Hello. Hey, Gene. How you doing, man? Jesus, back again. <laughs> back again. What How's is going? up? What is up? How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Glad to have Bro, you. Bro, my brain is so fried. I'm looking at your cam, and I'm like, Gene colored his fucking chair with yellow paint. <laughs> To make sure we knew where to look. You, you, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was wondering how quickly you would like reach and grab <laughs> for anything. And like, okay, the speck of yellow behind him has been the, <laughs> int the introduction point. All right. <laughs> it works. I know where to point my eyes now. I knew where to sit down. <sighs> I was like, where, 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 where do I, where do I podcast? I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, I covered my chair. I removed the covering and I was like, that's where I sit down. I have to say, this is one of those discourse moments where this is exactly what I mean when I say I peep in, I see what's going on, and I'm like, I want nothing to do with this. I want zero of my brain oh, dedicated to this. Oh, come on. It's the least interesting thing in the world to me. I'm out. Fuck it. Dude, it's, I, it's the it's most so interesting dumb. thing in the world. <laughs> People are so mad about like the least obtrusive thing in the world. This is um God. This is Deus Ex Human Revolutions outlines and piss filter all over again. It's like the same argument. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, you, you call it cowardice if you want. I just my brain wants nothing, nothing to do with it. Yeah. So so all right. FF seven. Um, I so, was like, yeah, where, 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 like, where did this all start? Let's trace it. Yeah, well, you know? I mean, Gene, look, obviously, I mean, it, it keeps starting over and over again. It's 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 like a loop, right, or yeah. a spiral. So right? you know, like, uh, um, I I thought we'd be bursting at the seams to jump into uh, uh into like a dragon, you know, discussion with you, but we got a <laughs> we got a detour <laughs> over to fucking doing. legibility <laughs> town over here. So yes, FF Seven Rebirth dropped its demo, and in it, there's yellow painted rocks which you climb on, and we have now there's like three yellow painted rocks man and we have now reignited the lazy game design discourse from when the re4 remake dropped with the yellow paint on the barrels and the dude game devs are so lazy oh <sighs> and then it? now we yes and now we go back and we find every example of like just like no it never used to be this way versus look how obvious and dumb it always used to be Verse and then no. What about accessibility? Versus no, mm -hmm. but people are. It, it's just ugh. so. It's the same thing over and over again. Like, like we've. I'm sure we've had this conversation to in eternity. the podcast before. Absolutely, yes, yeah. we have. Yeah. I think that FF7 does represent something fun, which is like the start and end of the argument within its own like singular screenshot. Because yeah. like FF7 in 97 was so illegible, you could hit the select button and it would put glowing triangles on the fucking screen to be like, this is the part where you can leave the room. This is the only interactable item in the background. I mean, this was also <laughs> an era in which like they, they went to putting layers to give the effect of depth to the screen because the game right before that was fucking ff6 you know so that was their first crack at like figuring out what camera angles might look like um i, yeah, I, I literally th never did 3d before ever yeah you know? i feel like um the, the no the one of the one of the nice uh uh, uh you know, nails in the in the in the wall here is Hi-Fi Rush with its arrow level when you're <laughs> when you're going through the the volcano and there's arrows guiding you and then you see like it actually is used as a, a point in the so, game where you see them all stacked up in the fucking uh, 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 dumpster later. Wooly, you are playing. You're playing Half Life Two right now. I am playing Half Life and Two. Half Life Two and Portal are like the source of this massive amount of consumer level game design knowledge because of their commentary modes, which are stellar. Mm -hmm. um, and I went through all of those games with all of their commentary modes and every fucking level, there is like a 10 minute dialogue that's like, so we couldn't get the player to fucking mm -hmm. look at something. Mm -hmm. We had to put a guy on a ledge, shoot you until you died. We had to remove this path from the right because dudes would go in circles all over and over. And with Portal, because the areas were all like white walls, the only solution they could come up with for most of the game was to just put fucking graffiti that has a big arrow that goes, look here. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and so, and and something that comes up a lot is that so when I was in 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 QA, obviously the time was spent, um, you know, mostly there there'd be times where you're assigned to do playtesting as a part of the department and you know you'd give feedback on things if they felt they were not clear or so there were also play tests where they'd bring the public in to do that and oh we, no not the we, public and like that was more so like uh, marketing would handle a lot of that we would do a bit of play testing where we'd come in and kind of observe and and check out what was going on for the most part but um it was it was uh it, the 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 results would would come in you know more or less like partially from public playtesting partially from our departments as well who from people who are familiar with the game and yes on almost every circumstance there's always a legibility pass that goes over these levels of things that are like oh this was meant to be obvious but it was not obvious enough what else can we do to it um and i think what's what's kind of goofy is just the part where it's like yes everything can be made more um integrated and it can anything can be made like better any anything can be in, like uh, um, yeah you could have a bespoke solution to every problem to, to, to be an elegant a more elegant way to, to to do things but it cannot be understated how much people run into a wall and don't understand where to go and why these things have come out the way they have and why this idea of the god light has existed Pretty much, again, ever since 3D started being a thing in video games. I think it's like the color. Like, I saw people talking about it because, like, we had those, like, Tomb Raider fucking, like, you know, those completely unnatural gray walls. And we have, like, highlighted fucking tape or, like, yeah. Mirror's Edge's runner vision, yeah. right? But as soon as it becomes, like, caution yellow, everyone starts to lose their fucking mind. I, I mean, I, I think if it was any bright color, the point it would still be like, no, you're making me feel stupid for doing this. Um, mm. I, but yeah, that obviously stands out on the environment stronger than others, as is as is intended. Um, I, w I, I, I will say that like there is, if you're gonna steel man the argument, which is a term I like, which is like the opposite. Steel man. Steel man. So a straw man in an argument is, as you know, is you're. you're I'm gonna cre create a weak version of what you're trying to say. Yeah. and attack it because it's a straw man and it's easy right to right yeah, yeah, yeah so a steel man is i'm going to make the strongest possible version of my opponent's argument and discuss that as because i have good faith that you believe in what you're saying oh that's like a like a like a sweet almost naive but it's a, it's way a, to to do something because you assume everyone's being all nice and happy. Well, and... no, it's more like it's more like to say that if I think you're arguing in good faith, I'm going to give you a charitable interpretation and then discuss based on that because I'm actually trying to find a solution to what we're talking about. Right? Okay. Um. So if you were to to steel man it, there is the one thing I can say about the idea of the 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 paint and such is, if you create a rule in games, you then have a hard time breaking that later on if you have to climb things later that are uh, not highlighted in the same way. And I'm reminded recently of playing through Mass Effect 2 where uh, the, or 3 where there's only for the first time ever in the DLC a moment where you have to shoot the glass of a window to crack it open during <laughs> yeah, okay. the DLC. And it's like nowhere else in the game are you shooting through glass. That's a rule that you have internalized. Don't shoot windows. It's pointless in this game. But here it asks mm -hmm. you to do that, right? That's the one thing that you can say is like uh, uh, potentially an issue is if you have to then allow climbing later and you don't use yellow. But you can still use, again, like things in the world the 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 the, the again lighting camera Absolutely. angles legibility can come in many different shapes and forms worst part about the discourse is i i retweeted the guy dave oshri who who yeah it was dave that kicked it up again yeah yeah well i mean he just pointed it out and i retweeted it and i wasn't talking about the fucking yellow paint at all i was talking about uh, I was complaining about clamoring. I'm tired of clamoring in games, kind of, you know, because you do that for like 12 hours in God of War Ragnarok. Like you're just cl you're just climbing and shimmying on ledges. Art. You're shimmying all over like like Uncharted. Like it's all it's it's and I get it. It's, it's I, I need to I need to stop Persian you for just a second, man. World. That yeah. part with the Treyas where you have to climb for like a fucking hour is like the reason I have I will never replay that game. Yeah. 
Whoa. No, the wall. You had to, yeah, you had to climb the wall and, and then and then and then that shit heads on top, right? But it just took forever. And I'm just like, oh my god, dude. Like and then why is Kratos why is why are Kratos and Cloud clamoring when we know Kratos can 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 leap over an entire Titan? It's something and they can force you to Cloud look at, at this this box that the concept artist drew for the shot. You know, what is interesting too is like in this particular instance in the exact same game, FF seven rebirth right before the um that before that whole the ledges occur uh you you have the pathway leading up to them and the the entire grounds to the mountain and um you're introduced to the parkour system where you can just hold the button down and just run yeah. into things jump all over all this bullshit and I was, birth is a strand type game yeah. yeah yeah and uh and 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 using that i kind of was like oh well let me just do what i like to do which is like go in all the other directions from the one that's intended initially and uh in doing so well one hit a bunch of things that looked like they should be jumpable but they turned out to not be and then mm -hmm. two hit a bunch of uh slowdown walls where it's like you're sprinting and then here you hit a of a field of now i can only walk slowly and mm -hmm. it's almost meant to be like, hey, stop exploring that much. Get back on the main path. If you really want to mm -hmm. keep going, you can get, you can walk until you're past a certain threshold on the ground and go back to sprinting. But there is a speed bump on both sides of the lane, aggressively mm -hmm. placed for the entire lead up to Mount Nibble. <laughs> it's like, no, Sephiroth has something to say. You got to listen, you know? Mm. I love it. I, um, I love. Yeah, I'm just. I was just mad about the clamoring because I'm just like, why? I, I'm. I, yeah, I'm just. It, it takes so long. Um, I. I like. Is it hiding loading? I don't know. I don't know. So you know, I thought it was screen. back in the day. Like the squeeze through was like, yeah. oh, they've been putting a loading screen here. But then we got the the power of the PlayStation 5's SSD, and we and we still got the 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 squeeze throughs, which to me says it's like. Where I'm, you remember Gears of War had that fucking something cool has happened. Hit the button, look at it, fucking look at it, stare at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels, it feels to me like we went through like two generations of that, and like that wasn't enough to actually make people look at it. Mm -hmm. So they're, so they're saying like, no, we're gonna put you in a fucking fake little baby cutscene where you squeeze through a little thing in the wall, and then mm -hmm. we'll have the pan out so that we can force you to look at it. And why are you making hand motions? What, what, is, what do you, what no, is in your I'm brain just, right now? I'm just excited because as you talk about the Gears of War uh, lock and look, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we, I, we just played Mass Effect One, and the lock and look occurred, and um, Reggie missed. Um, uh, 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 what should I call it? Uh, taking off. Um, sovereign, sovereign leaving. So missed sovereign taking off with the lock. Yeah, it's there. not enough. It's not strong enough. It happened. <laughs> I watched it happen in front of me. <laughs> you know, in a very in, in the year of our Lord, like twenty twenty two or whatever. Like, it, you know, that's super real. That's an absolutely really real thing. Half Life Two is still confusing. You know, Half Life Two can still be. I can I can still get lost in Half Life Two every oh, once in a while. You know. I mean, oh yeah, I'm, I'm playing it now. I'm you're you're lost right now, aren't you? Right? Yeah. I'm well, sure. that's it. I'm I'm getting turned around in a couple places, but I'm also like mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay, those are the wood paddles you have to break. It is there. Um. And I am Im immediately also seeing a lot of folks that are like, this is crazy because I inherently know where to go. But then I'm realizing that I don't know what it's like to look at this game with fresh eyes because of how much I know it like the back of my hand. AIDS. You know, and it's like, yeah, actually, it's it is you are learning a lot of where to navigate for the first time. And in some cases, like um, when I got when you first meet um, um, the uh, in Ravenholm, the, the priest, um, mm -hmm. he's. Mm -hmm talking to you and then you you see him on the roof on the other side and you jump across and then there's a moment where you have to kind of jump down from the roof onto like this little landing but because you just jumped up on the roof I kind of thought I was going to stay on that area for a minute um, and so yeah I kind of like walked around a little bit and it was one of those like no obviously look over the edge and it's like ah, when, is, when the whole world is open yeah, to you no, the, the, yeah. it's all about forced looking and it's like it's the the real life equivalent of like someone will like come to your house and stop you from playing like drunk lawn darts mm -hmm. because some people out there mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. safely and responsibly throw gigantic metal darts in the air while they're wasted um so you can't yeah, <laughs> with giant fucking <laughs> death drop spikes on them um i had the exact same thing recently in armored core 6 where 
uh, in in two or three of the cave levels, I'm navigating internal inside, and uh, there's a point where you go in to hit the objective, and then you exit, and then you're supposed to proceed further into the level. But the objective marker is not. Um, there's there, there, it's it's a po moment where the where the objective isn't there. So uh, in this particular case, I remember. It, I think it was like I had to drop way below. The cliff level where I was at, but it was not um, safe to do so on all the other areas. But there was one area where there was a safe drop. But like, I just I didn't pan over the cliff to look at it. You know. I think um, I think the the clamber, like as annoying as it is, Gene. I'm thinking back to playing Armored Core Six and other games in which I am actively trying to go. I'm going to try and see everything cool that's happening because I'm broadcasting it. And I think back to when characters go, holy shit, look at that. And they say that and the game has framed me so that I'm looking in the correct direction. Mm -hmm. And when somebody goes, hey, look at that, I start to fucking spin the camera mm -hmm. as hard as I can because I assume I'm not looking at it. And yep. I missed yep. it yep. <laughs> because I'm looking for it when I was already looking at it. We just Gene. and this is why this yeah. is why PT is is one of the most effective scariest games of all time because there's a fucking radio that's saying look behind you. Yeah, that's said, all you can do. I Ahead said behind look behind said, you. you, and then you so you look behind you. Yeah, and then, and then, and then you fuck. No. Uh, we Gene, we just talked about this a couple weeks ago when um, we're you're having the fucking worm battle in Armored Core Six and. You yeah. get that moment of the buildup, and you know it's about to go down, and the sound design is all there, and the mm -hmm. silence, and then the I won't miss. And I'm like, like, I'm spinning around like, please, where do I have to look? Don't miss the moment. And I, I, I luckily had it in frame, and it's set up in such a way where I think we found out afterwards the worm will always pop up at least where you're initially at looking. It'll pop up in that frame in front of you once it goes underground so that's brilliantly designed still, to maximize yeah, your chances yeah. but if you're panicking yeah. and they do it three times they do it three times but there's such a panicked moment of oh no i'm gonna miss the cool moment i don't know where they want me to look and it's like it's just if it's not obvious right away you're just like sweating but yeah the game mm -hmm. saved my ass in, in in that fight it was great that was me during the plus two to sex fight or whatever however you can pronounce right, it right, yeah yeah, yeah. When it's like doing the nuclear bomb attacks or like the combo attacks or whatever, and I just Hell. like stop playing because I'm just like trying to like look at him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and not <laughs> getting the right camera angle in the Placidus Sax fight is also bad because it's such a cinematic fight, you know? And yeah. and like yeah, obviously Elden Ring and FromSoft games are like, no, you better be looking, otherwise you're just gonna miss it. But it has those or amazing, you'll die. Yes, but it has <laughs> those amazing like. Oh, the concept art is happening right now, <laughs> and you have to be standing in the right place to get the full spread, the gamma drop. You know, like if you if you don't get it, you don't get it. But it's yeah, awesome if you do. Maybe come around and get it the next I, time. I have to say, yeah, and I second, feel the ninjas are just going to drop out of the sky with no warning. There's no there's no visual. <laughs> if you're either looking at the ninja that's about to slam into your face or not. That's it. <laughs> Sekiro. Uh. Like, I feel for, for game design people who, like, will probably look at playtesters or look at, like, somebody's stream. And I know for a fact that Wooly and I have both had the exact same situation. And Paige has had that situation. And Reggie's had that situation where you go into a room and there's only one thing to do in the room. And you spend, like, ten minutes turning the camera in just such a way that the only thing in the room that matters never actually comes into frame even once <laughs> and go, oh, I guess there's nothing in here and leave. And the viewers are going nuts. Anybody who worked on that is losing their fucking mind. It's just you can only experience something new once for the first time, you know? After that, your brain is knows exactly what a, what the map is and where to go and what to do. But twists and turns and corners and and the and holding your hand versus having a sense of discovery, right? Um, yeah, it's 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 a tricky balance. But you have to. You don't have to. But you should definitely err on the side of like letting the player not fucking completely miss those moments and or like do things that are like like the uh, the AC six fight like friendly towards you having the most cinematic experience possible. Um, on that note, 
uh, FF7 Rebirth, if I could, if we're talking about that, does yeah, a, I guess we're talking about it. Does a fucking fantastic job with that through, like, in every other way. I mean, the the um, it's still I said I think I said it about remake, but it's the best seamless music transitions in the game. Oh, it's good. It's I don't think the industry, I, to my experience, has had better just the background music into. The, the 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 transition from combat. every yeah into combat out of combat and then into a new room where we're gonna start hinting at the Sephiroth theme or we're mm -hmm. gonna start hinting at um you know one of the other themes of intrigue or the the you know the Hojo layer theme all that shit is just phasing in and out in such a magnificent way and like um it's not just in and out of battle it's also like in and out of like um you're walking like there's a moment where you open up the doors and walk towards like the 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 top view of Mount Nibble and like you get like a nice like vista view and like it's waits for you to walk up there to drop the theme out to a more quiet subdued version, you know? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Going through the demo is like there was a point when I was streaming it where I had this like sad realization in my chest of like what the fuck is the point of FF16? Because FF16 was supposed to be the action game, Final Fantasy game. And I'm doing fucking Sephiroth and Cloud did fucking air combos and team attacks and shit. And I'm like, <laughs> this is a lot faster and a lot more action fucking packed than 16 heavier. was, even at the end. Yeah, I think I think sixteen existing is them continuing what they do, which is trying out a couple different battle systems and seeing what works, what sticks. You know, um, think you know, you, uh, 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 thirteen, twelve, and ten are wildly. Thirteen invented the stagger system, so we'll give it a little golf clap. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, and then whatever seventeen becomes, you know, can choose to balance uh, uh, however much of, of the action you get in 16 with perhaps some of the more traditional elements wherever they want to pull them. But 7 is also has a secondary job of being um, reminiscent of the old game while also playing like Advent Children. And that's a unique yeah. goal compared to the other FFs, you know? It's, it's it a is. better goal. It's sick. It's super sick. It's, 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 it's better. It rules. That's just what it is. It, it yeah. fucking rules, man. It 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 plays awesome. I'm I like even even the very limited, like tutorial baby version of all the skills and air combos you get. It feels so fucking great. I'm just a sucker for double and triple text. Like I like cre Chrono Trigger created Everybody is Chrono Trigger, Trigger. The, the, it created something inside of me that's here forever and it's just the character team up moment and then the triple if you can do it. And I hope we get but we we haven't seen anything but you know when P5 Royal introduced like god man teamwork in the fight. Teamwork in the fight feels great. Everything needs yeah. to do that. Everything all the all the time. Make that happen. <laughs> That desire unlocked for me as soon as I saw the, the American SNES cover of Chrono Trigger. Yes, and right. It was, yes, it was in the, the skull, wrong and character. Like, that, is a, <laughs> that is the sickest shit I've ever seen. We get to do that in the video game. That's a sick cover. It looks even cooler than the Japanese version somehow. Um, like very the, cool. Yeah, and like you're actually reminding me that that wasn't. It wasn't just in the game it was the advertising on the cover yeah, of dude, that's this what out. this is Just about party members are going to fight like to like together together you are in mid air <laughs> slashing the monster and your party <laughs> member is lighting your sword on fire what else is doing <laughs> that Fuck. i was i was really happy because you play intergrade and intergrade is like an entire dlc devoted to like two characters that play like a human dual tech because you hit the button and they just become one person. Oh, okay. and I remember thinking like, man, I really hope this means we're going to get a bunch of stupid dual techs in, in, in the next <laughs> one. And now we got Aerith fucking throwing on Barrett sunglasses and feral stance Tifa and yeah. all this <laughs> stupid shit. And, and not just you have not only do you have dual techs in regular combat, but you've got dual tech limit breaks, you know? You've got the mm -hmm. the and then like the effects you get are different. So you get yeah, you have the um, the zero MP, you know, fucking cloud Cephi, uh, mm -hmm. uh, w whatever. Such a puppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Some, okay, some, some, some okay. Give you like like an extra ATB meter, so you you have uh, three ATB meters instead. Mm -hmm. 
it's uh, the Fujos have never had a better time than playing this demo. Incredible. Incredible. It's so out of control. Like like Cloud practically goes <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, man. Uh and it's just like yeah, that's right cuz he said I- I'm excited, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a oh, such a puppy. Yeah. That so it's funny cuz okay, so I I mentioned so Punch Bomb like, should, should we be watching this? <laughs> Punch Bomb just finished FF7, right? And uh is OG go- FF7? Uh OG FF7. And yeah, and she and she nice. played remake 1, right? Right. Um, but has not seen any of the ACBC DC CC LO you know, rebirth, rebirth of, of or uh, what was it called? The um, compilation. Compilation. Compilation of FF7. She yeah. has not Most seen, people have it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Hasn't seen any of that. So um, to her, it was like the old game straight into this wild remake world of super hyper-realism and details. And like in going over that and then playing the demo for Rebirth, I kind of realized, I was like, oh, if you don't have any of the compilation in your brain or even Kingdom Hearts in your brain, like, <laughs> you have no idea where this insane fucking pairing energy yeah, comes from. Yeah, when did they become lovers? When, when did, did that, that happen? happen? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, I, and I'm like, and so we, I think the pinpoint, I, and I might be wrong, but I think the pinpoint is Advent Children, right? It that is. energy is where that, that version of Sephiroth gets created. And, like, if you don't have that, it's very, like... Is this what they were getting at in the game I just played? And it's like, no, really, they weren't. He was kind of a silent mystery and a weirdo. Um, mm-hmm. But and then the idea is like, where? Well, hey, it- I'm going to stop you for a second there. So I, I went over it and I was talking with people and and went to, and got to the conclusion that in original FF7, outside of the flashback, you never talk to Sephiroth even once in the entire game. There are literally no lines of dialogue between him and any other character ever I, in ever. the entire game in real time. Mm-hmm. Okay, because because yeah. I time. Yeah. I remember there's I saw someone mentioning that like you he never addresses the party, but I thought he addresses Cloud. Never, never. interesting. No. Not like so at the last it's, it's second, the, the, the Genova live stream, whatever yeah. in, in his head or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So that. So I um, guess we're to assume he was just thinking, thinking about Cloud's blood like the whole time. Well, and it's like, what is the moment of that that matters? Because the whole time, if anything, you you like like him and Zach are having their little like, oh, you're my, you're a little underling, and you're getting up in your ways, and oh, say your prayers to your sword, yada yada, bit, but. The actual connection that forms is based on him just getting stabbed that time. Dude, the the, he the gets first stabbed and he's like, time oh, you made speak. me bleed. I fucking need you inside of me, bro. <laughs> Do the it again, first... like you did with the Buster Sword, please. <laughs> so the first time they speak after seven years is the ending of Advent Children. God, yeah. God. <laughs> and then I forgot that there is a good parallel between Guts and Griffith in that relationship between. The, the, the oh, idea yeah, yeah, yeah. that the cloud was the one that bested Sephiroth, and then Sephiroth can't let that go. Right. Know? Yeah, he can't right, deal with right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. And then mm-hmm. again, well, you know what? It's like, okay, you penetrated me, but then I penetrated you. So. And now we're going to penetrate <laughs> each other back and forth. <laughs> we both got to, you know. And this time, though, you rejected mine and you swung me away. So what the fuck? <laughs> the next time I break up with the next time I break up with somebody, I will tell her, I will never be a memory. <laughs> God, one of the worst last things you could ever say to someone you what? so <laughs> incredible energy. Yeah, I'm just I'm thinking about the demo, and I'm thinking about your describing of how Punch Mom went through it, and um. So I'm going to talk about FF7. The game is 27 years old, and when I talk about FF7 Remake 2 Rebirth, I'm going to talk about the original FF7. And um, it, like, it is fascinating to see something pretending to be something old and wink at you in every single shot. Like the framing of Cloud in every single scene and every line of dialogue and every single person that talks to him always has a very careful framing of who else is in the shot or who else is not in the shot Mm -hmm. or the dialogue is just kind of off and doesn't really make any fucking sense. Or quite literally, there's computer glitching occurring 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> to for the, with the remember remember that part in the flashback memory when the animus started glitching out? <laughs> I do. <laughs> that was that was cute though because as I was watching it and as I was going through it, I was like the the it was a lot less clear in the original. But here now with the context of the past and also like a good camera angle, we can see like the exact moments that the fabrication wouldn't make any sense if it continued even one second further in the cutscene. And then we go, ah, skip, mm. ah, skip. Mm. Um, there are still like things that I go. So when you're standing outside with Tifa as the staircase moment is happening inside, right? yes. in theory, you shouldn't know what's going on inside. But we're going in anyway because video games, you know. Okay, so there, there is like a really, really great, like detail. So Crisis Core happened, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to assume that people are familiar with Crisis Core because that game is weird and kind of bad. But in the Nibelheim storyline, if we're talking unreliable narrators, you would then ask, "Where the fuck is Genesis? Mm -hmm. Why isn't Gen he was there?" But Cloud didn't physically see him with his eyes at any point. So he's not in the flashback. <laughs> and that's why we, <laughs> and we're playing through an unre unreliable narrator, the most unreliable narrator section. And there you go. What is, what is cool though, is playing through that scene um, where my, yeah, and, and yes, Gact is, uh, they did reuse his voice lines for the reunion. So it's not, mm. Anyway, um, before we talk that, yeah, so play, uh, watching through the, 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 the ride to Nibelheim and stuff, what was cool, um, yeah, Punch Mom, who, like, a lot of the times, she doesn't pick up on subtle things and stuff, like, there's a couple times where we'll be like, oh, did you catch it? And be like, oh, wait, what? And then we'll go back. But she was like, in watching the, the, the truck scene where Cloud's like, oh, you guys, like, like full of energy, do, getting it out of his system, all that, you know, she's like, oh, Cloud's acting different. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he is, isn't he? <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, you're catching that, right? So that's clear, um, and it's that's cool. and it's made much more obvious in that scene because you have like the the facial expressions, the details, all the other things coming through. You know, oh, this is before she played OGF of seven. No, no, right? no, this is so. this is after, but like what now watching remake and um um and and the the rebirth uh, cutscene. Um, okay, there's so much she going know, on. She would know why she's acting like this. Yes, right? yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Right. Um, and it's also like the the in the story so far, um, there's like it's actually being way more obvious about every. It's just telling you straight up, you know. It's like, it's it's like nudging you with, no, no, no. with your with your fucking it's, elbows. It's, like, ah, it's ah. more it's more than a nudge. The 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 story so far <laughs> straight up tells you defeating Sephiroth at the end of remake breaks open the timeline for continuity or whatever. It it, it just yeah. says it right. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, so that that was an, a, a good detail. Something though that I am kind of bummed about is I have a strong memory of in the original FF7, the truck stops, you get out, and a fight sequence occurs. It's you yeah. and it's Cloud. It's Sephiroth and Cloud, mm -hmm. and a dragon is in the way. And yeah, it's a dragon. Yeah. It's a giant fucking yeah. real green dragon, the most fantasy thing mm -hmm. ever, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does zero damage to him, and he fucking one shots it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that being replaced with a couple of two with two like little monsters for the for the I was like ah, I was hoping yeah, it, I get it. I was hoping it would be a dragon because that that did such a strong yeah. power level establishing moment. Well, that gets moment. moved to like the fucking materia defender freak at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it does. becomes a boss battle, I guess. Whatever. Um, also, uh, with that scene in the OG. Levels. Yeah, well, the, 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 you you want to talk about like because that was the first time in OG that we see Sephiroth's power level, and the, yeah. the important thing with that moment is that you don't control Sephiroth even though he's no. in your party. He just goes ahead and just one shots the dragon. Wow. And you're just like, Whoa, I didn't even touch anything, right. you know. So like that like conveys like Sephiroth's power without even like saying anything. Yeah. So like it did feel I, I did feel when I started it, I was like, oh, I'm playing Sephiroth. That's cool. And then I was like, oh, but like now I'm now I'm Sephiroth and. Now I don't feel. Now I'm not. Now it's, it's not stink. It's, we're not stink Blitzkin anymore. You know. Yes. Well, like, but, but I understand but, why but, they did that. 
because like we beat him up at the end of the game. I think it's cool, but you know. But to be fair, the mo the first time you get to control him after you're on that on that road battle, the thing sure. dies in one second, and you don't get a chance to look at his his mechanics. Well, that's true. It's yeah. a, it, you press one button, it melts, and the fight is over. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm like, yeah, you, that that, that still PC works. Is gonna rip, you know, with the mods that the Sephiroth mods that are gonna come come out after oh, this. Man. Oh yeah. You know? Oh boy. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. So that that is that is one little bit there, right? Um, There's so much going on in that truck scene that made me like just so happy. The voice acting decisions they made for the characters in that that tiny scene are so fucking perfect. They've got Cloud's voice actor doing an impression of a different actor, and we have that actor in the scene pretending to do an impression of Cloud's actor. Is that what was happening? Cloud was That's what's happening. Yeah. He was pretend yeah. he was doing a voice for the for the guard. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why you hear Zach's voice out of the guard saying, oh. "You want to talk about a girlfriend?" Because that's exactly out of out, out of what he said in Crisis Core. Wow. You know? Okay. Did you also notice? Um, going approaching the house uh approaching your mom's house during the the mm. nibelheim fire um as you're going mom mom right mm. there's the npc subtitles mm. on the side and it says mm. serviceman uh service agent mom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it pops yeah. up as one of them and not and even though it says cloud subtitle at the box at the bottom yeah, so yeah, yeah. you have your own memory and you're rec you're retelling your memory but you mm. somewhere deep down inside know that that's not right and both subtitles mm. pop up with conflicting fucking uh, um speakers mm -hmm. i mean they're doing, some alan wick, they're doing some alan wick shit here it's cool security yeah, security uh, officer security officer real real like nice work on that yeah uh, Rebirth ain't out. I haven't played it, but I remember there was this big discussion when Remake came out of like, do I absolutely need to play or have known everything that happened in FF7 to play FF7 Remake? And the answer is no. Like, like long up inflection. I can only imagine, especially after that fucking trailer they showed us uh, in that fucking state of play, yeah. that parts of Rebirth are going to be incomprehensible without like a wide spectrum of knowledge on these games coming out. Yeah, um, I would absolutely imagine that. Anyone who played remake that's like is like the new the new audience that never went that wasn't around for a seven original um, plays remake as their first introduction to the series and then perhaps plays this demo. I can imagine someone there going, OK, hold on. What the fuck? I need to go back and at least watch yeah. a, a video or mm -hmm. something, you know, mm -hmm. I think um, my favorite version of this discussion was me going like uh, rebirth is like season seven of the FF seven TV show. Because it went FF7, then it went Advent Children, then it went Before Crisis, then it went Crisis Core, then it went Dirge. And then we got Remake and Rebirth, right? And I saw someone respond to me like, dude, if I need to know about Dirge of Cerberus to understand anything in fucking Rebirth, I'm going to be so mad. And I'm like, dude, you were fighting Dirge of Cerberus boss fights <laughs> in FF7 Remake! You didn't know. You didn't know! Oh, yeah, man. you didn't even know because because you weren't familiar with, with the game, <laughs> literally. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Oh, fuck, I, there was uh, there was a particular pull I just thought of and then I lost. Yeah, are we gonna hang out with Lucrecia and fucking cyber bully her for being the dumbest idiot that ever fucking existed in any game? Oh, I hate that bitch. Oh, well, they, did you see her, Gene? Did you see her in Crisis Core? She is like the dumbest. I forgot, I, but I everyone was so dumb in Crisis Core, though. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Oh that's, man, she she like gets tricked into giving birth to Satan, um, but like it's oh, right. it's easy to trick her. Uh, fucking yeah, the, and then of course the state of play where Rosh is back. <laughs> it, and, oh, Hell yeah, my God. You, he, he was see, gonna baby. come back. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. He's going to be the main playable character of the third game. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
he kills Cloud. Just, just, like, just yeah, just sack Cloud, Sephiroth. Yeah, Cloud Sephiroth yeah Cloud's gonna die at the end, and then Roche is gonna step up and be like, "I'm Zach." It's the th <laughs> <laughs> the three of them behind in the background, and him up front, like giving the middle finger, grabbing a ball, going, "Eh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck." Um, Project R. Okay, Roche. So. Is it just me, or is did I miss? Maybe this is a thing. Zangin, yeah, is he? Has he always been supposed to give off a Sabin vibe? Is that yeah? Okay, yeah. I, com yeah. I completely didn't. That was that was lost on me to the ages because I'm a new a player of FF FF six. But mm. yeah, he's he's uh, yeah. the monk guy, man. I'm a big, yeah, big tough like, monk. Oh, monk. Okay. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like, oh my god. It's, it's fucking Sabin. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, he also right? exists in this game to show everyone at home uh, just how easy it would be for a big, strong man to completely encircle Cloud's waist with your hands. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So we were t we were talking about what the third game is going to be called because they've already used Reunion for Crisis Core, and it has to start mm. with an R. So yes, FF Seven Rush Make. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, God, God, that Goober's back. Um, I think it's going to be called Reprise. That's my guess. That's my good. Guess. Final Fantasy VII Reprise. That'd be good. That'd because be good. Repri Reprise is also a song on one of their fucking CDs, and also, and so was Rebirth. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, uh, you're going to use that ne word next. Wait, so. um, what's the? Not, I had a I had a thought in my brain, and it's gone. What, like, they, what if they just call it Reloaded? <laughs> they just just completely I, fucking. <laughs> The worst. Resurrection. What, if, what if they just said, "What if they fucked off and just called it resurrection and yeah, just, just fucking yeah. revelations, just all the oh hackiest, yeah, that'd be the yeah. the hackiest so ones." Ugh. Yeah, like revengeance is too obvious, right? So it has to be like revelations yeah. or you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but but again, they've they've completely used up reunion, so. Uh, I can't fucking believe they blew Reunion on the Crisis Core mm -hmm, re-release. Mm -hmm. It would have been was, the perfect one. I would have. I was so fucking adamant that the third game was going to be called Reunion until I saw that. Yeah, I th I think from developer because I've been like doing like deep dive like developer like like reads now because uh, I usually never do this but now I am. Uh, it feels like they called it reunion, reunion because they want to signal to the, the audience that re reunion is part of like the, the Crisis Core game was is now part of the remake trilogy. Yeah, and it might it might be like it's important, dude. It's, it's important. It's very important. Rhapsodius. Yeah. Soldier G is vital. Rhapsodius may never be forgotten. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah. I, I I think the story of Angeal and Genesis might be very very important. <laughs> You, man, I want I want fancy flashback cutscenes about fucking oh god, what are they called? Dumb apples. Dumb apples, yeah. In, oh, in the Monaro region. I will I will always say that there's still there's something cold and harsh to be remembered about the original way that um Zach's death plays out. Just cliffside. Oh, it's 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 like Bam. understated. Super it's just, yeah, and there's something there's something just g brutal and grit about that in particular, but it becoming mm -hmm. the moment that it does does make it cool, you know. And in particular, you get yeah. the the breaking of the fucking slot that adds. I a lot remember to it, when you we. Know? I remember. I still remember when we first because because to be clear, the, 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 for anyone who, anybody who doesn't know the gene lore, I first played Final Fantasy VII completely in Japanese, so I didn't know what the fuck was going on throughout the entire game, and I min maxed it. I got nice of the round everything without understanding what the hell what was going was on in the story or what Damn. was happening. But when I got to the part and I saw the photograph of Zach. And it was like a black haired cloud. I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> oh black man, that's cloud? fucking confusing. That's insanely it's, confusing. I was so confused and I was like so intrigued. And that's that's when I started to like start learning Japanese more. I was like, oh, I should probably figure out what's actually happening in the story this late in the game. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I 
I'll have more to talk about it in a second or, or near the end of this because uh, Paige and I watched Evan Children yesterday. Mm. Um, but uh, it's so it's really nice that like Crisis Core and Before Crisis and a a AC has all this insane, cringe, embarrassing, stupid shit. And they've made no attempt to distance themselves from it at all. There's no attempt to even imply that, yeah, no, the dumb Apple thing didn't happen or Zach's goofy fucking behavior was actually played up for Crisis Core. Like, and the weird latent homoeroticism from Advent Children is not only here, it's like on steroids. Um, I like it. We so in uh, uh, after beating the demo uh, yesterday, uh, we watched uh, Last Order, right? Just the what... only thing in <laughs> compilation to no longer be canon, huh? Is that is, oh, is it not canon? It's, okay, because it, it is not canon because Crisis so. Core replaces overrode it. It. It, it, it does, it mm, does directly okay. replace it, but okay. it is interesting watching it and then like you get your, your cut to like the Turks lining up, and it's like, all right, there's the Turks we know, and then a bunch of fucking before crisis assholes <laughs> with their with their extra design standing around being like giving out their one line of personality you know and they're just like oh man i never learned about the rest of those turks who are you who the fuck were they but you they know were what? cool for You're that one probably wallpaper. fine <laughs> oh man yeah it's like, like it's like it's such a it's such a clear moment of like okay Reno and Rude and there's Elena and then all these others with with hairstyles and personalities going and me and me don't forget about that one. <laughs> I just I mm. I just played OG FF seven and it, I still can't get over how they re reimagined or rebranded the Turks as like these these funny happy happy goofy guys. Dude, they're fucking when, scum. Yeah, when when Sung fucking slaps Aerith on the helicopter when she's like no your little daughter is okay slap no you i'm gonna slap your face Aerith. shut the fuck up nah we're cool yeah. we wear suits someone has to take the burden and we choose to be those people <laughs> also like, reno also, drops the plate and kills like a million people and then they try to turn him into a goofy dude first of all it says <laughs> thousands <laughs> thousands whatever and second someone had to do it Right? Let the responsibility fall on us. Let our hands be stained, even though it's just to frame Avalanche. Like, fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's exactly that. Um, and, and, and then later, too, when you're, yeah, you're watching, like, Last Order, and it's like, uh, um, the, they're like, oh, uh, do we capture Zach? The, do we capture Zach dead or alive? And it's like try to bring him alive if you can. But no, it's the, all the soldiers and grunts that are like, "Fuck the orders! We want to kill him and drag his body in." Ah, it's but a fucking if, traitor, man! But if the Turks were were in charge, they would have brought Zach in alive. You see, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but they sure do look sharp in those goddamn suits. Oh, they look cool. They They're look so, so cool. Reno with the Lena loose. looks great. And the ah, looks and awesome. then, you know, look fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, They're the first Yakuza. They're the first Yakuza as, as, as far as I'm concerned in games. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I, yeah, I, see it. I was not familiar with what Yakuza were like. As a trope, mm -hmm. you know, before that point, for so for sure, at least mm -hmm. as an experience to us, yeah, very yeah, cool. totally the, the, the Shinra Zaibatsu right there, uh huh, you know? uh huh, huh, mm -hmm. and yeah, okay, the way Reno like wears his suit, yes, because mm -hmm. with like the open top, because mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. were all like, because we know what like Italian mob mobster, you know, coding, which is just yeah, mm -hmm. suits and ties and hats and stuff, but yeah, just covered mm -hmm. head to toe on fucking spaghetti, mm -hmm. but then yeah, everything would would look a lot more, especially the like again like God uh, Goodfellas or Godfather esque, you know, but yeah, Reno is specifically giving off a Yakuza vibe. Um, yeah, Patriarch of the Shinra clan, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm I I I didn't oh, find a, a, a Yakuza Rufus Shinra introduction would be so sick though, man. They should have just, just done that for Rufus. I'm down. just Rufus, Rufus like the yeah. only person who gets it. <laughs> Rufus yeah. is also stylish as fuck. I'm 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 so in, cool. sold. So cool. God damn, what a piece of shit! But he's so dripped out, <laughs> and he's got the coin. Ah, uh, you're mm -hmm. like I. You're like you're so evil. You're the worst. But also, 
Uh, well, your dad was worse, to be fair. But you want to mm. use him in Guilty Gear Strive. You know? That's what's up. It, yeah. <laughs> Rufus getting, like, glowed up like that in Remake was so weird. Because I remember it was, it's like, one of the best fights in the whole game. And, he's, yeah, like you said, he's got the coin. And it's, and it's at the top of the fucking tower. It's so cool. And I'm like, man, this is the one time, probably, we're ever going to fight this guy. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, this feels like something I would want to do two more times. Yeah, yeah. They, what, what? what? How, how many times do you fight him in OG? Once. What, just that one. Just, just that, that once. Right? Just that one. Just the once. Cool. And then he gets right. blown up in his office. That's crazy. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I thought it was, uh, um, yeah, just it's pretty cool walking around Nibelheim and, like, the, the crowd following wherever Sephiroth is and, uh, again, just being, like, uh, uh, um, like introduced to the uh, idol, you don't have to talk to strangers. Bit you just walk up to people and they kind of go, "Oh, hey, Cloud," or they're having and their own business like and fucking stuff. four bowls of soup Big in sandwiches. thirty seconds and ruin your dinner. I missed, I missed the piano. I couldn't find it. I, it's in Tifa's room, dude. Ah, I fucking missed yeah, it's it. Where, it's where, it's where you steal are. her underwear. So I thought it was because there's a piano when you walk into the manor. And I thought it was that one, but that piano is actually busted up and fucked because you mm -hmm. know, he, went, he went on the rampage. Yeah. So there's something really psycho about the new context of like, I am telling you guys a story. So then Tifa, I went into your room and I started going through your closet and she gives you the chance to go. Really? <laughs> and then they give you a dialogue promptly. You go, yeah, yeah, no, I totally look through your stuff. Yeah. Yes, they sh should have painted the piano yellow, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um the uh, uh yeah, and then there was the other bit was with her with her teacher where it's like, "Oh, yes, and one of my my great students, Tifa." And and you're and you're kind of like, "It really? Her?" <laughs> Almost like didn't think she had it in her and she's like, "Hey, what what the fuck, Cloud?" You're like, "Ah." Oh, anyway, moving on. You were just the girl next door. Um yeah, no, that's a that's a nice taste. What's a bit odd though is they're because they're like you beat this uh, chapter and then when the full game comes out, you won't have to play it again. You can skip past it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. No, <laughs> right? And not only that, but like it's like, but the version of the game we're playing is giving you materia every two seconds because it's a demo, and you're picking up all but kinds that of materia is not gonna carry forward out of a fucking flashback exactly no so but it's just like that is not the same final version you're gonna play you know that's a yeah because cloud cloud and nibelheim is level 40 you don't start as level 40 and in, in no man Reaper. i think they said it was like 15 or something 20 yeah whatever the hell you probably left midgar at in the original in, in the original that yeah that, yeah that, yeah that's what they said and that's true is that when i left midgar in og i was like oh level 15 level 17 so well, I guess. Well, like, yeah, you're you're in a, you're in a flashback. So should gameplay fucking drop you back to, you know, a previous version of? Well, of your also, levels? I don't mean to put too too much of a point on it, but also the flashback we're playing through didn't happen. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's nothing. <laughs> how the fuck could this materia right, carry right, over? Right, right, right. I mean, the only true thing was that he probably did sniff, sniff Tifa's panties. That's it. Yeah, probably. It's the sharpest memory, you know? Zach was doing this <laughs> shit, and I had to go get her orthopedic underwear for reasons. Yeah. Um, the new pause screen is interesting. Uh, I, do you know where they are? Te Temple of the oh, Ages? Where are they? Yeah, they're standing in the fucking Temple right of the there. Ages in the pause screen. Right there. With the black materia behind you as you're going through the, the fucking materia system. Fucking like, and I'm like, the moment I, I you see that, you're like, oh, you're gonna be able to pan around to the party and see and get a better look at it. And then, like, yeah, the time of day changes, and you're and like, once Sephiroth joins, you know, I was go, I went into time and try and see how much of a good look you could get at it. Yeah, that's fucking, that's super cool. I like that. That that shit is great. That big excitement, mm -hmm. big excitement for that Final Fantasy Seven. Oh my god, dude! When the state of play, like the first words out of the state of play's mouth is "Cloud, you need to bring me the black material." I'm like, oh, you're you're saying too much already. So you know? yeah, I don't, I don't even want wanna, to hear the words "black material" yet. You know, I don't know if we want to talk about that trailer like now or at all. I mean, um, rest assured, you can just say that it is aggressively spoilerful. And it is. Uh, and that as 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 we knew 
And I did say the day before that I was like, yeah, I think I'm at that point where I just want hands on. I don't want to keep watching promo material. I, uh, but then it was I was doing that thing where I'm like, this probably has a lot of spoilers in it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to frame by frame this fucking shit. OK, as fast as I can. And then I sent Gene a fucking screenshot of something I pulled out of the trailer. And he was like, I can't believe yeah. they had the like audacity mid- to put that shit in the trailer. Um, I had I the moment believe. midstream where I was like, I don't want to be watching this anymore, but I'm already here. <laughs> and I decided, you know, we're like, okay, people wanted to Your do job. more of these. So let's do it. But yeah, well, you job. have um, you have the reverse of Paige's power. So Paige was here. Uh, uh, we were watching some Sony. Th- I forget what it was. Um, and as soon as she gets up and leaves, all the cool shit that everyone was waiting for happens. Interesting. You have the opposite. If you, if, if I hear, hey, Wooly's uh, uh, watching today's press conference. Oh, there's gonna be spoilers all over that fucking shit. So to- if you hadn't watched it, that cut of the trailer would have been, been completely fine. different. Would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just and, all gameplay stuff. Yeah. And again, people know me and how I don't want to tune in for these things anyway. But I'm like, I can't just like it would be the weirdest thing to just walk in the middle of that. That just that'd be nuts. Um, or or fucking go <laughs> offline. But fortunately, um, my my Logan power has already started. And I oh all, yeah yes oh that's good so that's I, good and and like a whole like most of what <laughs> occurred is already gone um my fucking my yeah, my James Howlett is good. healing the brain over I barely I, I yeah. will say there's only one thing I really want to talk about in that trailer because I think it's really brave I think they made some really like dramatic and and heroic brave decisions in that FF7 trailer because in the in the part where Tifa and Aerith walk out to show Red 13 their new beach wear. He stumbles over his words because Square agrees that Red thinks human women are hot. (laughs) And that is a brave stance. That is, that is, they were, they're so real for that. So, so, uh, you know, when we had the original Red 13 moment of Red plus Tifa for the fucking Hojo uh, uh, purposes, that was just the jab. And then now that Hojo is no longer around, we see that actually Red would have been, yeah, Red Red was like, okay, well, (laughs) we're, 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 this is my fate. Where, so where, yes, yeah, so be it, right? Where are the, sh- where are the, uh, where are the, the fan fiction writers, uh, on this one? What's going on? Um, oh god, <laughs> oh god, people, white woman and dog have... warning, stop it. It's everybody gonna needs to chill, relax, dire ramifications stop. for the internet at large. Stop. You know, the worst part is it's the same people that it ever was, but now they've been like energized. Yeah, I'm shocked at how like passionate the, the, the shipping conversation has ha- has happened. Someone and, like, just, people are just like, all right, look, someone, oh, did they hurt you? Did they say something that hurt you in your mind? Uh, someone just said Red Rocket 13. We're moving on. We're moving oh, on. No. We're moving oh, on. Yeah, no. Oh, that's, I, that's not as bad as I would have we're, expected. We're moving on. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's, no, no. We're, we're, hey, we're moving on. Um, yeah, I don't know Real if anything life. else uh, 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 comes to mind, but just, yeah, good shit on that. Uh, demo did what it's supposed to, and, um... They're gonna have a bigger demo Junon. later, which is weird. Yeah, Junon mm-hmm. update, right? So, um, interesting that it's like, like, FF16 demo had the second part for the combat, you know, uh, um, just right afterwards, and here it's like, oh, it'll be a patch, and you'll come back to it. Uh, that might serve better in a case that like it gives you a reason to reboot and remember you know it's like another um it's another uh, advert advertisement in its in its update coming well uh, i feel like it's it's because they want to have the demo that's the start of the game and they go you can carry it forward whoa but for people that aren't totally sold and they're like yeah but what's it going to be like later in the game they can actually play Mm -hmm. like what the Mm -hmm. the the core majority of most of the game is going to be like yeah, um, but no, really enjoyed that and just reminded me of, of like, yeah, I, I fucking, I'm super hyped on these games, man. <laughs> like, for all the bullshit, it's great. Um, no, and and I, and I do know as well when, uh, when like, when the first, yeah, when it opened up and, it, and, and you know, you see Sephiroth there. And I've, I've said a couple times, I'm like, yep, we know we've kind of uh, uh, blown the wad. And, like, I had, like, a sigh. But it's like... 
there's Saw people talking about that. Yeah, but it's like, look, man, it's still awesome, and we're like, it's doing a great job, and I'm very Where's excited for where G? this is going. I know that that wad is blown, and I know why it's blown in that way, and that, and it's okay. It's not at all like, it's it's an aspect of the story that just like what I said about Zach. You know, like, I understand that you can go two ways with this. You can have Zack die in a, it's cold, it's brutal, and that makes it hurt all the more. And then you can have the one where it's, like, long, it's drawn out, it's heroic, and it's Zack looking at Cloud and going, hey, in your moment of PTSD, you should become mean right now, <laughs> right? Like, you, hey, you want to... It be- is weird you how become he kind of just <laughs> says that to him verbatim. Hey, 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 be me. No, 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 it's okay, be me, though, <laughs> right? And you're like, oh, this is a completely different version of this memory. You have to try <laughs> and succeed in all my hopes and dreams, including getting with my girl. You got Yeah, I know you have your own, and I know your childhood friends, but enough of that shit. You got a job to do. <laughs> Get in there, bro. And think of me when you're getting in there. I'll be standing oh, in the doorway. Oh, he probably is. <laughs> I'm standing oh in God. the doorway. You know I'm there. I'm leaning up against that church door. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and that is a different version, a different emotion. But I think they're I think they both they're both good. I like I like if you don't want to play it in the like the brutal brevities, the soul of wit harsh way. Then you can you can do this more melodramatic version, but it still it still lands, you know. I feel the same about what they're doing with Sephiroth. Yeah. So uh, one of the reasons I brought up because I saw people talking about that, and I I actually I don't have the uh, response, but I do agree with you, Wooly, and I actually understand exactly how you got there. In FF Seven, you don't interact with Sephiroth damn near at all. So every time you see him, it's like whoa, shit. There he is. It's fucking Sephiroth. It's vicious. And you don't get to fight him until the <laughs> ass end of the game, right? Mm-hmm. And then Kingdom Hearts happened, and we went into the era at Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2 and Advent Children and Crisis Core and all this shit. And I feel like we went into the era of Sephiroth oversaturation. If I may. His mystery If I left. may. Uh, for you and I in particular, I would also throw in a chapter there called The Club Spaces. Yeah, oh, fucking Jesus <laughs> Christ. In, My Sefi. In college, we went to the club spaces where the comic, anime, sci-fi, and various clubs were all shared. And that's where I think we both experienced in real life uh, Sefi Bishi Baby. Like energy. Sefi Sama, right? Glom. Seshomaru Sama and Sefi Sama. And all of that in <sighs> real life for the first time going, what is... Is this the same character? I want to point out before we continue any further that I have a specific person in my mind and she was really nice. Sure. But this shit. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) No, I know. I know. And I know you know. We know. But this energy was brought up and it's like I don't remember the part where Octo Slash was performed with a Yowie paddle. I, I don't Well Wooly. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. From what I've lady. made of the FF Rebirth paddle I just almost said the FF Rebirth paddle. Well from what I played of the FF seven rebirth, fucking Square Enix remembers <laughs> that moment so that's the thing right because they're right there that energy then got vindicated because advent children was not out yet like those (laughs) girls are super right so right they made it happen (laughs) the fujoshi energy was super canon man it's never yeah, been there was more that one scene in the trailer where where sephiroth just grabs cloud and just like asmr is in his ears you know oh yeah holds him tight and he's like, yeah. oh, man. He licks an earlobe, he does. He got penetrated by Cloud, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 